You're listening to Beyond Wellness Radio, bringing you the cutting edge in health, biohacking, and sports performance. Stay up to date and listen anywhere and anytime on your computer, tablet, or smartphone by subscribing on iTunes. Catch your host, Dr. Justin Marcajani, as he answers your burning health questions as well as interviews from world-renowned guest experts. For more Beyond Wellness Radio, go to beyondwellnessradio.com. Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Welcome to Beyond Wellness Radio. Feel free and head over to beyondwellnessradio.com where you can access our full podcast transcriptions. While you're there, you can also sign up for our thyroid and female hormone video series. This series goes into the root cause of why your hormones are out of balance. While you're there, you can also schedule a functional medicine consult with Dr. Justin, myself, where we'll dig deeper into the root cause of your health challenges. Feel free and think of sharing this podcast with at least one person. This podcast grows by people sharing it. Sharing is caring. If you can think of one person that can benefit from this information, please feel free and share it. If you're enjoying the podcast, make sure you subscribe on iTunes. You can also click below the video or podcast where you'll see the iTunes review button and leave us a review. You can also sign up for the newsletter at beyondwellnessradio.com where you'll get updates before anyone else. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Welcome back to Beyond Wellness Radio. Really excited. We got Andy Nilo here. It's a silent H, right, Andy? Silent H. Causing a lot of problems. I know, right? Well, same with me with the last name Marcajani, so I, I get it. I feel your pain. Oh, yeah, yeah. How you been today, Andy? What's going on? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Living the dream out here in Glen Oaks Canyon. I got a nice backyard now, whereas before I just had like a little single apartment. I just moved here. So it's, it, this is like probably my second podcast that I've done, but it, yeah, it's fun to me because I have a whole different area. I'm trying to find good lighting, a nice, comfortable place to do this, but wouldn't have it any other way, man. I'm good. How about you? How are you? It's just great. It's like 80 degrees, Austin, Texas. They're going to be uh, going doing some water skiing this weekend if the weather holds up nice. So really excited. What, Lake Austin? Yeah, Lake Austin, man. Love it. Right on. Yeah, you're yeah, coming I, down for Paleo FX in May, right? I am. I am. Yeah, you're speaking, I hear? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll be excited to check out your booth. I know you got one this year. Yeah, we, we did that. Uh, let's see. We did that, was it the year before, where we only had one product, and then it, it was really good. Very busy, and, I, and it's uh, growing, as you know. I mean, it's, it's good, comp- good conferences like that just... It's it's easily the the biggest paleo uh, conference probably in the world, but yeah, probably one of the top health and wellness uh, conferences that you can go to. That I would say Bulletproof, Natural Products West is pretty good, but yeah, it's big. I'm really looking forward to it because we have a lot of more lot more products now. So most Absolutely. people, oh, Absolutely. so. And and you actually crossed my radar screen number one. You had an amazing story that I wanted you to kind of talk about, kind of that you know, fall from grace. And then this whole experience kind of brought you this, you know, where you're at now with Alatura. So I really want you to go into that story in a sec. And also I've, I've heard um, lots of patients and even staff members that work for me that, that rave about your skincare line. They were saying, yeah, we're using this line. And I said, tell me more about it. And then they sent me your info and I was educating myself on it and just seeing the quality of ingredients. And I know Dave Asprey was vetting you, which, you know, Dave puts his stamp of approval. It's got to be high quality product. So I right. love the product. I want to get more info. I got a whole bunch of um, product coming my way, so I'm looking forward to trying it myself, number one. Right. And number two, I'm excited to, you know, for the listeners to hear your story and kind of what you went through to, to bring this kind of to fruition. Well, yeah, first, thank you. I mean, that, that's awesome. I, it, it's, uh, it's always fun. I mean, this, this, uh, it all started March 20, 2011. I was in an accident where I was hit by a westbound heading vehicle, hit into the eastbound lane, and then run over by a Land Rover. And I woke up. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty rough. I mean, we just passed the the six year anniversary. What a little over a week and a half ago. So uh, it's it's always just it's difficult just remembering where my family was at that point and where I was just in a state of recovery and just lucky to be alive. So it's it's pretty difficult. But I mean, I'm I'm moving. I've definitely moved past it. I mean, I have something now to to like to you know to look forward to wake up to, which is a business that definitely was uh, became became of that. Um, accident. So I just, uh, I've always been into health, wellness, and definitely skincare before the accident. But 
purity of ingredients just were not there in the in the, in the scar creams and the serums that my surgeons were recommending that I use to just reverse the, the scarring. And I had this thick, uh, probably two inch scar right here from uh, one of the uh, points of impact after after I landed. I got flipped around a little bit and then on the concrete I, I landed. Actually, my jaw was punctured through the bottom of my mouth. My it was like a 90 degree angle right here. They were just in, it was in pieces. This whole left side of my face was just yeah, it was in pieces. So I uh, wow. very bad, it was a very bad compound uh, maxillo or you know jaw break. But it, the, so we had a maxillo facial surgeon from Cedar Sinai who came in and uh, he couldn't do it. He he needed backup. And so that's when we knew something was serious. And my parents we looked into someone private. Luckily, my mom had connections at. Uh, with Dr. Schindel up in Stanford University. And mm -hmm. so he specializes in maxillofacial uh, surgery. And so he had like one of his uh, one of his uh, best uh, students. Uh, there's a, like, I forget the term for it, but he, he was working here in Beverly Hills. Yeah. And he came right over, his name's Joseph Brugerity. And I just knew that uh, well, we felt like we were in very good hands. And so just in a, in a point of, uh, you know, recovery, that's what you need. But he, he was, uh, he had these scar, these scar, uh, creams and serums that I was going to buy, but I looked at the back and they were just loaded with chemicals and corticosteroids and fragrances and just fillers. I mean, there was very little active ingredient, but what is that active ingredient? You know, it's synthetic, it's a, uh, it's a chemical and it's, I felt it was counterproductive to healing. So I just, I was thankful to have a good surgery done, but I wanted to do my recovery based on my own research and create, you know, I didn't want to leave the house. So I just, I started buying my own extracts, oils, butters, and everything. And I just started melting things down in my kitchen, my little iron casket. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. I was melting down cacao butter, uh, beeswax, sea buckthorn, clary sage, lavender, adding CoQ10, colostrum, pearl powder. I mean, just making these little pastes after I would make a mask. So I was just a little routine that I would do daily that I would see and feel results. And it made me feel good. So the, the clays were pulling out the impurities that I was going through with all the antibiotics and all the x-rays and CT scan that I had to go through. And I was just in a fog. I was in a daze and I was in, a, I was like a zombie and I, I lost my zest and it, I would have to go on walks to get that circulation flowing from, uh, from head to toe. But bottom line, I really wanted to reverse the abrasions and scarring that I had from uh, the accident. And I did that through just research. I mean, there's so much information out there. And I was just using myself as my biggest science experiment. I mean, necessity is the mother of invention. And lo and behold, uh, years later, I'm, I have a product on Dave Asprey's website called uh, the Alteric Clay Mask. And that's what really led to just after, you know, like you said, getting that stamp of approval from Dave Asprey and having him invest in the brand and just really back it. And obviously that the customers have to like the product. And so the reviews started flowing in and that's when I knew I had something. So I just took it and ran with it. I mean, people really respond to the, the fact that your skin is your largest organ. So you really want to treat it like another mouth. I mean, what you put onto it is going to be absorbed into your bloodstream. It's going to pass through your liver and you, you have to treat it as such. So I just, I take a lot of pride in just going next level with my ingredient decks and, and going on it with a different approach. I mean, searching everywhere for things that other people uh, haven't heard of or don't use. I, I really like being unique in that sense. I don't work with uh, research and development teams. I do it all myself. I mean, we have eight products. I do it all on me. So let's run down the list of ingredients that you found, like with the, with the scar healing and the uh, skin recovery. What were the major ingredients? And we know you put it in your formulas now, but what were some of the big ones you found that really moved the needle for you? Oh, man. So cacao butter for sure. Cacao butter, manuka. Cacao butter, mm -hmm. cacao butter manuka, honey, uh, the two different plant-derived stem cells. I talked to – who did I talk? She's named, uh, her name is Maggie um, out of North Carolina. She really, you know, I just, I just, I love cold calling and people respond to passion. You know I mean? When you have a story and you're the owner of the company, you're not an assistant calling for someone and you back it up and go, Hey, look, you know, I just want to, want to, I want to figure out like what the cutting edge ingredients are. But even before that, uh, I would just, uh, that's so like the basics. So right in the beginning stage uh, when I was just making it, um, you know, just ingredient by ingredient, step by step. The ones that really stood out were colostrum, yeah. manuka honey, cacao butter, the, 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 you know, the carrier of a good olive oil through things like uh, sea buckthorn. What do, I mean, there was just so many. I mean, red clover. I have like 31 ingredients in that night cream, which was essentially my scar um, removal cream. I mean, my this what was two and a half inches is now, I mean, people, I have to point it out. And people I can't even see it here on Skype. That's, that's phenomenal. You got amazing recovery and healing with that. 
Thank you. I mean, I, I hit it. I, it just became my obsession. I really wanted to hit it from the inside to really build that blood and, and you know, help the, the, the cell turnover accelerate, but also hit it from the outside. And I say it extremely consistent uh, with that. I didn't miss days. I mean, I, everything had a purpose. I mean, because I was just, I was bummed out and I wanted to figure out a way to, to just see, you know, see if I could you know, reverse all that. I wanted to just, you know, be back where I was before. My goal was to be back in better, better shape than I was Always. before. I did that. Yeah. So it's and funny. You know? And with the initial injuries, do you stay out of the sun for a period of time to make sure there's there's not oh, any? Yeah. Yes. That's why I went on uh, I, I went on walks at night. During the day was my research time just to find cutting edge ingredients and kind of do my mixing and blending. I moved everything out of my bedroom and my living room and made my bedroom my little lab office type deal. And I would just sit there and I would think and I would write little notes down. I would journal. Um, I would check out reputable websites. I would check out non-reputable websites. I just wanted to hear, you know, hear different opinions and um, different people's stories and what they did yeah. for recovery. And that's where I came with my blend of clays. That's where I came with my different extracts. That's where I came with experimenting with things like American ginseng topically, pearl powder topically. I'd never seen any of that, but I had nothing but time. So I figured, I, I mean, believe me, a lot of things didn't work. I mean, there were some, there were definitely uh, some ingredients that did not make the roster for very good reason. But I mean, it's okay. I mean, it, that's, you know, trial and error was, you know, I was my own biggest beta tester for probably a year. And then when I found that I had something, the same people who saw me in the ICU, ICU room were just blown away with the recovery. And so then I started traveling around town with my little backpack and my little plastic jar of clay and my, my little bottle of apple cider vinegar and, and essential oil blend. And I would just go over to their house and mix a bowl for them. And they would gather their friends, friends of friends and stuff like that. And they would, I would just, all I wanted just was just feedback. I mean, I, I never, this is way, way before Alatur. This is before I had a website, anything. I, it was just called The Clay Mask. And I, uh, yeah, I mean, hour, hour and a half later, they would, I would get, you know, the feedback was great. So I knew I had something, but it's like, how do you go about, where do you go? Where do you reach out to? Totally. Gal or SD Lauder and just go, hey guys, I, I have this amazing mask. So I didn't really, it's tough. So I would just, Friends of friends would refer me to makeup artists and people who had med spas and salons. But I mean, people liked it, but when you don't really have that credibility, it's like, what do you do? Luckily, I had a friend who owned a med spa in San Diego and she took it on board um, as a trial to some, some patients that she trusted and they loved it too. So then she took it on her menu of treatments and that was like my own little victory right there. I mean, I was like, I, you know, I had something. I still didn't have a name. They just called it the min Mineral Dense nutrient rich mask and it was like it was it charged like 499 bucks for three treatments i was like what like how do you just to have something that people that you created that people would pay for i don't care if it's a meal but anything it just felt good and so that little flicker of momentum led it led to a really you know it's like man i it felt good like little validation and then i just went from there i, I cold emailed dave asprey i i, I just uh I tried a lot of different combinations of his email address with like copy pasting the, the exact same thing. And one of them went through. And so he, uh, he took me on board as a bulletproof ambassador, had me on his podcast and the rest is really history. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's fun to look back on, but, um, yeah, that's amazing. Took that and ran with it. That's absolutely amazing. So with, uh, with all the things that you did in your recovery, so we obviously use some of the, the really awesome ingredients and did you do any supplemental procedures as well to help? Did you do like any of the micro needling or any, any of the laser resurfacing, anything at all supplementally? Uh, absolutely. So, um, before the mask, I, I just did it right now. Actually, I, I do micro needling, micro needling. We actually, we're going to be releasing a titanium, um, micro micro needle here within the next month or something because it really just helps escort those micronutrients just past the dermis and um, just and it really uh, accelerates the absorption and um, it's just it, it turns up the mask a little bit so I would start doing that just in the scar area and I'd see and feel results and I'm like all right I'm just gonna do this all over my neck face everywhere and even my scalp too actually wow yeah, I mean, because it just made sense to open up those pores and just, you know, especially at the fo hit the follicle right at the at the scalp. I just made sense to me, and I would really massage it in, and it just it helps just you know create a little circulation to the scalp, to the dermis, everywhere. And so that was one. As far as the laser, we I, I did a little pixel treatment on the scar area. Um, I can't really say it did a whole lot. Um, I've heard that cold lasers are great. Uh, but as far as the pixel, it really became inflamed. I mean, what it does, it basically creates a, a, you know, a burn and then it has to heal again. I mean, maybe it did a little bit, but 
you got to be ready for some serious downtime if you're going to be doing a, an intense laser like that. But I hear cold lasers are good, very good these days. So that could be an option as well. Excellent. Anything else you did that moved the needle? And by the way, um, yeah. when, when are you coming out with the um, the the um, micro needling thing you mentioned? Just they're in production ago? right now. They're in production right now. Yeah, right. it's a nice titanium. Um, so they're going to be sent to me, and who knows? Maybe, but but maybe by the time this airs, I don't know. But um, it's it's great. We're going to just have that as like a nice little add-on. I mean, people keep asking me uh, for that and I, I would refer them to others. And I'm like, why, why don't I just make my own and make it easier for them? Well, that's great. We'll put all the products that we mentioned in the show below. So anyone needs to access them, they can get, get them pretty fast. Sure. Perfect. Yeah. And, uh, and I know your kind of history coming into this, you were a model for a while. You were also coll collegiate athlete baseball, right? Right. Yeah. right. So you, so you were doing a lot with your body. You're doing a lot, you know, your, your body essentially was how you earned your income. Right. Yeah. And so that, and then after the accident, I, you know, I lost 17 pounds. So, and I didn't really have a lot of weight to lose. So I, I just building that weight back was strictly through doing a lot of this, uh, this, this research on Chinese herbs, yeah. um, adaptogens, um, you know, just Ayurveda, things like that, just to help build my blood, circulate that blood and remove the impurities and reduce inflammation, strengthen yeah. the immune system. Amino acids have been huge. And I just, so I did this morning tonic just to help build my blood and circulate that blood and really just get me going. And I had this nighttime tonic to calm me down and uh, help me, you know, recover and sleep my best. And that, that just became this, I just, every day, it was just part of my uh, routine. And so that was, that helped me build back my, build back my frame uh, quicker. And then also just help me throughout my workouts and then eating to a point where it was just, it's similar to like a, excuse me, a paleo diet, but it's it, with a twist of a lot of uh, just, just rich, rich uh, tonics and things like that throughout the day. So, but it's mostly paleo with a little, yeah, it's, it's pretty much paleo, I would say. How about and collagen? How much collagen are you adding into your diet? Two tablespoons. I use the Bulletproof collagen powder uh, every morning in my coffee. And so throughout the day, nice, post recovery, nice. I, for, for connected tissue and joint and, and joint health and things like that, I just, I mean, I feel so good um, just as a post workout as well. But in the morning, adding it just dissolves nice and it doesn't taste like much, but I feel, you know, my, I have my parents on that as well. I, I think that's the most absorbable form of protein and the most beneficial form of protein um, we can do. That gelatin's great but I, I like to stick right between those two and then the colostrum um and then just to hit it with a little nice absorbable form of igf1 growth factors but um what about you what, what are your thoughts on that i mean because i'm still learning but i you know people are so used to the the whey protein and the you know the the, the things that you, you you find it you know all around but i mean I, I like to get the most absorbable form form of protein less oh yeah you know. Absolutely. I'm a huge fan of collagen peptides. I have my own line as well called True Collagen, really? but very similar grass-fed, organic, in peptide form to maximize absorption. Love the, the glycine content, which is great for the enterocyte turnover in the gut. Also great for glutathione precursors for the liver. Um, right. Also hydroxyproline, proline, a lot of the you know collagen, a lot of the peptides that help kind of rejuvenate the skin, cartilage, all those things. So it's I'm such a huge fan of that. And I see a lot of patients with gut issues as well. And mm -hmm. we'll talk about this next because the skin is kind of the mirror of the gut. What's your take on skin health connected to the gut? I just, so maybe you can help explain that. I heard that from someone like yourself. And so I just ran with it and started eating as much fermented foods as I could. Yeah. So a lot of kraut, a lot of fermented cat, you know, um, beets, and I like a brand, um, Farmhouse Culture is a great brand. I mean, I just take out a bag of those every other day. I mean, so I'm going through, I mean, they're expensive, but I really feel like it takes care of that gut. I mean, with my, my diaphragm sits, sits closer to my spine. I'm nice and light on my feet. I'm just going through, uh, I'm, I'm just more, uh, you know, you talk about fun functional nutrition. I think that's the essential part of it. You know, I'm not creating any issues with digestion through eating those fermented foods. So I taking care of that gut biome is uh, just so important. And you know, that's the thing is, is probiotics are becoming like this catchphrase. And I went through, I went through probiotics, but I'd rather get it naturally through food. I mean, I don't, I didn't really see or feel too much. Matter of fact, some of it would make my stomach bark uh, a little bit and kind of like uh, a little bloated, a little gassy, but now it's like, I just stick with um, the fermented vegetables and I'm, I'm having with every meal and it just really helps 
helps me. But um, I'm open to it. I mean, do you have any ideas? Are you a fan of uh, fermented vegetables as well? Or? Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, sauerkraut, uh, pickles, um, the kombucha and such, the lower sugar kombucha. A lot of the kombucha today is becoming like soda if you look at the sugar. So I like the, the GT Dave's, two grams of sugar in the uh, in the ginger kombucha. Huge fan of that for sure. Uh, again, it, therapeutically, some people that have infections and dysbiosis, you know, they, they benefit by – cleaning out the gut, right? You know, you go in the garden, you pull the weeds out before you throw down the seeds. And I find a lot of people, if they have some weeds in there, the weeds kind of interact with the seeds, i.e. Um, you get some of the bloating and such. But, you know, some people, they get a little histamine response as well. So huge fan of the probiotics. I think that's big. You also mentioned in the past you had a placenta smoothie. Tell me a little bit more about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, so I, I was trying everything. And I some people would recommend so here, I mean, here's what I did. I'm talking bison liver. I chop them up and I take out that little connective tissue lining. Yeah. Sorry to gross anybody out, out, out oh, it's there. All good. So I would do that. Egg yolks, because my jaw was wired shut. So I was yeah. trying to get as much nutrition in as possible. Uh, deer placenta, I would, I would break up the little capsules, dump them in. I'd probably do four of those a day. Um, for the four capsules of those a day, uh, egg yolks, bison liver, and I mean, <laughs> colostrum. So I, I was just trying to you know, get as much nutrition back into my system as I could because I couldn't eat. And uh, yeah, so so a lot of people get gr grossed out. But the placenta apparently is the most uh, nutrient dense source of the animal. I mean, it's some of I, Dave was saying some of the animals eat their placenta after giving all, birth. All of them do, except humans. Except I recommend a lot of my patients to encapsulate their placentas. Wow, really? Huge benefits. I mean, every patient that I've had do it, they've had a history of like postpartum, you know, the depression that occurs after because basically the fetus is a magnet for nutrition. So if you can take that and bottle it up and put it in the capsules, right, you get a little bit of oxytocin and some of those nutrients too. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. And have they, have they done it? Oh, yeah. I've had patients do it and had phenomenal results. I mean, patients with three and four kids that have had yeah. postpartum, postpartum, postpartum did it. And then, boom, you know, depression was gone after that last kid. Yeah. A ton of B vitamins, I would assume. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And if, you know, obviously a woman's going to be trying to breastfeed, so you get a little bit of oxytocin, which really helps facilitate that milk letdown reflex as well. Right. Yeah. Wow. Well, so, I mean, that, that's what I would do. And then the, I would get a little the B from the, the bison liver as well, egg yolks, super – I mean, just I would just – try to pack as much nutrition as there as possible a little spirulina beet powder yeah. I mean, you, so yeah that's that, that's what i did and i still do it i just felt so good i mean at a point where i was just rocked i mean you, you named seven broken ribs collapsed lung and then head to toe but i felt pretty good shortly after and i, I blame it all on nutrition or uh, and uh just my you know topically with with my mask just reducing a lot of that that just just pent up uh uh, condensed just right around the eye area and just yeah. reduced a lot of that and pulled out a lot of the impurities as well. So, yeah. Totally. So walk me through kind of your history. You were a college athlete at where Cal? Yeah. So I went to, I went to Berkeley on a baseball scholarship, uh, 2000 to 2002 transferred to Sacramento state. Yeah. Uh, played a year there and then finished up at St. Mary's college in Moraga, which is the West coast conference. I, um, had an opportunity. I've had opportunities to to play professionally. I just I didn't get drafted, and uh, it was I was really close. I was right there, but it just didn't happen. So I moved down to L.A. and I had, actually well, I had a partial torn rotator cuff, so that was yeah. a bit. But um, but with a partial tear, as you know, it just takes those weird little exercises to to grow back. And so I was like, all right, well, I didn't want to do that at home. So I moved down to L.A. and I started working out with Beverly Hills High School and uh, getting my arm back in shape to go yeah. back and professionally. I had an opportunity to to at least uh, work out and, and play with the team, uh, which is still independent baseball called the um, Human Scorpions, which back then was the Golden Baseball League. But um, in being down in L.A. and living on my buddy's couch, uh, he, who was an actor, he was he had me run these sides with him, which are which are like audition sides. And, yeah. And it was for a baseball film. And I was like still fresh out of baseball. And so it just it just came pretty quickly to me. And I didn't have any nerves because I wasn't auditioning. So I was repeating. I was better at his lines than he was. And so it was, it was really cool that he did this, but he's like, man, have you ever thought about getting into this? Cause you're, I mean, this is you to a T, this particular role. And, uh, I was like, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, what do you think? So it was really nice of him cause this never happens, but he yeah. reached to the director and he's like, hey, this role that I'm, I'm going out for a buddy of mine is actually better, better for it than I am. Would you consider seeing him? So they shot him a picture. They told him a little bit about my baseball background and sometimes things like that happen. So he brought me in and 
I had nothing to lose. So I just, I did really well in that. Got a call back, screen test, and ended up booking that role, which is a lead in a, a feature film. And so then I just gave up baseball and uh, just focused on that. I got representation and started really working a lot, booked some soap operas, a lot of commercials, started modeling a little bit. And then, yeah, the rest is, I've been doing that ever up until, uh, yeah, so that was 2006, 2000, yeah, 2000, yeah, 2006 up until my accident, 2011. So, I was working a lot as a, as a model and actor, and then uh, the accident hit, and then after that, my my attention to nutrition and skincare really just that became my focus, and it was really just staring me in the face my entire life. I mean, that's my passion, you know, is is health and well being, nutrition, wellness, you name it. So that's I'm right where I'm supposed to be, but I still act and I do a little bit of modeling, but. The acting is, but I'm very specific with my with my agents on like what I want to do. I want it to be something fun that I. You know, preferably, honestly, baseball. I want it baseball related, and if it's not there, then I won't do it. I actually booked a, a guest star on a, a HBO or a Fox show called Pitch last fall that aired. So that, it, it was a it was a lot yeah. of fun just to shoot at Petco Park. So that's so awesome. I'm still doing it, but uh, I'm you know, Alatur is my baby and my focus absolutely. So very cool. And regarding yeah. the baseball, what was your diet like when you were an athlete? I mean, were you as good as it was now with the good fats and all those things? Or did you Not, learn that later on? I, I learned that later on. Uh, you know, back then, this was early 2000s to mid 2000s. And I had not heard of the good fat thing. I, yeah. I really, back then, That's it was bad really back then. Low, yeah. low fat. But what I was were, was um, low carb. I was focused on uh, pr uh, nutrient density. So right then, I was big into the, the men's health magazines. Yeah. Eat this, not that. Yeah. And they were good with the basics. I mean, they're still good with just telling people and explaining very clearly in, in, a, in an easy to, to to remember way on what to eat, what what vegetables to eat, why to eat them, what to stay away from. And so that's what I focused on. And I would just some people, you know, at the dining halls, at the at the dorm at the dormitory that I would stay in would see me doing this little finicky little lunches with spinach and tuna and like no dressing that was my big thing like they're like why do you, how do you eat that without dressing i'm like i don't know i just i heard the dressing's the worst part for you in the salad so i don't i don't eat it and so that year by year it just accelerated i got a little bit better year by year and, it, and that's the way it's going to be because i'm constantly searching for new the latest and greatest but yeah back then i was 215 and it was just all i was an outfielder and pitcher so outfielder pitcher got it yeah and so like you, uh, it was all about bulk and just. How you know, fast can you throw? Ninety-one. Really? Yeah, ninety-one. But I, but I think it could be. I think it could be a little bit more because I never got my core involved. It was all arm. Totally. So. And that's the key. I work with athletes a lot, especially pitchers. The key really is is the lower body, the glutes, because you throw so much yeah. with those hips. Exactly. Yeah, and the stride length. I had no flexibility. I, I would yeah. just rely yeah. on my arm, and uh, I really feel like if you know, because. With the long toss and you're getting all that momentum in, I could throw it for you know, I, yeah. I could, but and that usually trans, translates to velocity on the mound. And 91 was good, but I, I I really feel like if I got that with all the technology these days, as you know, as far yeah. as like getting, because I'm really tight around this area, and you see the pitchers like they're they're nice and loose, although they're they're getting bigger these days. Guys like Jake Arrieta, I mean, they're getting bigger and, and stronger, but they're also you know doing things like yoga and taking care of those bodies and getting that stride length out there. And so I, I really feel like I didn't even dip into the potential of what my arm could bring velocity wise, but it's all good. It's oh, all totally. Good. Do you ever wish that you had the knowledge you have now with like the good fats and all the nutrient density and all the things that you're doing now with the healthy lifestyle habits, you could bring that back in time sometimes? Oh, hey, seriously, I, I still hit, I still throw. I mean, it, you gave me, I don't know, month or two months, I really feel like I could get back into it. I'm 35, I'm, I'll be 36 in November, but yeah, I mean, I, I just was down at spring training with the Cubs, Dodgers, I'm hitting with those guys and I'm right there. I haven't even picked up a bat for, I don't know, years. I mean, every spring training I do it, so I probably didn't even pick up a bat for the since the, the year before and, and hit. So, I mean, I, I just, it's one of those things when you don't really, when you're not thinking about it and that was my biggest thing was my mind. I would just get too caught up into, uh, you know, where my hips or my hands supposed to be where they are, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, uh, but I, now it's just kind of grip and rip and it's like, it's so funny how that works. Sometimes it's mind over matter. Totally. Now, did you have any history of acne issues or skin issues? So I, yes, I yeah. did. And that's, that's what got me so focused on mm -hmm. skincare early on. Uh, I could, man, yeah, ba I had bad back acne uh. and, and it was all because of the products I was using that in diet.
Mm-hmm. And so I started going, man, it was so frustrating, man. I couldn't even, in my locker, I, I wouldn't even turn around. I would just stand face face out because it was really embarrassing. Yeah, very embarrassing. So I just, you know, you, you, you have things that bug you and you try to figure out a way to, you know, there's all this information out there. So I, I look, I was using clear cell. Um, yeah. on face and it was all, I would always have some type of irritation, always have some type of re- it was my skin reacting to the toxins. Yeah. That's what it, that's what it was. And then I was using a terrible body wash and I was eating bad, eating poorly. And so I just, that's yet yeah, I was what, 19, 20 years old. Then I just started becoming interested into it. I did my first clay mask when I was 20, 20, 20 years old. And that bent night. That night match is one ingredient. And I would do that every Sunday, I think. And so that, I mean, 20 years old, I'm about to be 36. So I've been doing it for 15 years. I mean, I'm talking, I don't miss weeks. That is a clay mask is to the people out there. It doesn't have to be mine. It could be, that is undeniably effective internally, externally, that night clay is, and there's a lot of other great ones as well. So many. And so, so that's so- pulling out a lot of toxins and anyone can do it. Even if you're healthy, what are the benefits? Are you going to see improvements with acne, with wrinkles, with elasticity? What do you see with that? So what I, all of, all of that. And so yeah. what, what I see is you can spot treat what it pulls out. I've, I've heard of people putting my mask, you know, uh, spot treating little spider bites and it just pulls out that infection for uh-huh. them. Yeah. And then bringing a lot of that circulation to the surface of the skin and, and clays are just so mineral rich, uh, pulling out heavy. It has like an electro, uh, electric charge. So as far as like pulling out, you know, it, it just, it, it, it's, it works with your own electromagnetic uh, energy to pull out heavy metals yeah. and, it's, uh, and it's just, you know, the military uses it for, for that, uh, as far as like they do like little bentonite treatments internally, externally, just to, to help pull out and deal deal with a lot of the radiation and things like that. Um, as far as, yeah, as far as mineral density and, and I would say the biggest things as far as mineral density, just escorting those good, uh, nutrients back into the skin, things like silica, uh, pyrophyllites over 70% in silica. Uh, I mean, just one of the building blocks in collagen, I believe. So, yeah. And also just, it's, it just, the, yeah. So I would say as far as like filling out those wrinkles, I would say wrinkles are just creating circulation to that surface and kind of filling out those fine lines. Wrinkles also, I think, uh, can be due to a, you know, poor diet as far as sugar, dairy, um, hydration, Maybe a little bit too much sun exposure without replenishing that lost moisture, staying hydrated. And there are a lot of, I mean, just unbelievable extracts, butters, essential oils these days that you can just kind of recondition, you know, just stay diligent with that. Just put something on before you go to bed at night. You'll wake up. I think even because I mean, that's the most that's the most important time to do when you're in one position for six to eight hours. Totally. Hit it with some night cream. I mean, it, or hit it with, um, it could just be one ingredient. I started out with cacao butter and I started doing that. I'm like, all right, well, let's add some Manuka honey to it. All right, well, let's add some colostrum to it. And then it just step by step, I created something that's, I mean, I can't go without it. I really, you know. So, so if someone's trying to kind of dip their toe in and kind of figure out what product will get me the best bang for the buck in the Alituria line, what would that be? Would that be the night cream? If you're if you're going to do uh, take the time because mine's a, a mask or like say the say the clay mask is just a powdered yes. mask and you you add the emulsifying whether it's rose water aloe vera juice yeah. apple cider vinegar is po- uh, very popular if you're going to take the time to do it I mean we that's that's the most effective treatment so we mask have is number one mask is number one uh, I would say night cream number two is that uh, the best one for scarring as well or for any skin imperfections no. yeah yes got yeah. it. Definitely. And is there a second one or third one? I'm sorry. No, so, I mean, it's just tough. To, it's, I mean, the, the, the moisturizer is great too. We have the body lotion, uh, any serum. SPF in the moisturizer. And not that I can claim, uh, yeah. but it's just we're we're, I'm going to release a, a, a sunscreen here too. It's just, I'm going to, I'm going to be using a non nano zinc and that I can get about a 30, uh, SPF rating, which yeah. is good. I mean, people want it. I just, so I'll, I'm going to make one and you know, I don't really have a problem with non nano zinc. I mean, it's a mineral yeah. and it provides some sun protectants uh, and that's what people want. So what I'll do, I'll just, I'm just going to create one that is, you know, without any of the fillers. I mean, we're, we're some, there's a good brand out there, Keys, K-E-Y-S, and they, they have the Solar RX. It's good. They just have, I think I can make theirs better. So, I mean, that's, that's what I'm going to do. But, um, um, yeah, I would say, you know, some good sun exposure, depending on, um, you know, everyone's history, I think it's beneficial. 
just absorbing nutrients, good vitamin D, and just just helping with overall sense of well-being. I mean, I know people that live in San Diego that went to Oregon and they flat out went through a, a seasonal depression because they they didn't have the sun. And totally. So, and yeah, what's your rec what's your recommendation on sun exposure? Just kind of get a gentle pink. You don't want to burn. Is that your general recommendation? Absolute 15, 20 minutes tops. I think uh, I read from Tim Fer and Tim Ferriss's book, I believe, that anything in past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, anything past twenty minutes, uh, now you're re you, you're starting to burn. Um, so I would say 15, 20 minutes daily if you can. Just maybe get out and you know I you know take the shirt off. Maybe get some good absorption all over the body. Or just face with wherever you'd like to, and just it's. I definitely I can't. I mean, so I can't go without it. But I I, just, I notice a, a, a absolute uh, result every time after I get a little sun exposure. And are you able to now get some sun on those old injuries because the scars are fully healed now? Yes, I, I do. Yeah, I mean it's 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 been a while, but I mean I took a yeah. I mean I didn't I didn't you know because the sun just will bake in that that scar. So I mean yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get much sun for a long time. So now uh, yeah it's. It's pretty much healed, so I, I'm out and about. But that's a, that's a good point. If if someone is is uh, recovering and has scarring, I would definitely stay out of the sun. And if you do, get some very good uh, natural um, sunblock over that area if you're going to go skiing or something like that, because it, it's it's horrible for it, Absolutely. especially in the early stage. Absolutely. And tell me about some of the plant stem cells, because that's very unique in your line. I know you yeah. mentioned you found it from that girl there uh, over in North Carolina, but tell me more about yeah. that. How did you get that in there? And is that a big needle mover in your line? It's it, yeah, absolutely. I mean, nobody uses several different ones, and I I tried oh, man, chlorella, argan. Uh, I probably tried six or seven different uh, forms of all the all the different uh, plant derived stem cells, and I went with a nice soluble form of uh, edelweiss and gardenia. So mm. well, they both have studies to well, uh, the gardenia stimulates collagen production, and the edelweiss just helps firm and tone. And so that co the combination, they work extremely well together. And in my formula, it's just, it's, it's that, that particular um, blend is in the night cream. And I'm, I'm gonna be working with uh, bamboo stem cells, uh, ginseng stem cells on, on, a, on my scrub. Uh, I didn't wanna use it in my cleanser because it's a wash off product. But I, I mean, I wanted to use it, but it just didn't make sense because you're just putting it on really quick and, and washing it off. But in my scrub, you're going to be massaging in bamboo, which is nature's highest form of silica, into the skin. It's just uh, and it, yeah, so it's I'm, I'm just becoming because plants, if you look, they they help repair themselves when they when they're cut off. I mean, just they 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 pinpoint that area to help regrow. I mean, it's it's a very very uh, you know, I'm very lucky that scientists started looking at that and the fact that they repair themselves after injury and then, or after being, you know, cut or something like that so quickly. Um, and so I, I want to see if there's an aloe vera stem cell. I just got to be, I mean, if you, you see how quickly they repair themselves and how and they just grow right back. I mean, it's amazing. So insane. What's your experience with human cell, uh, stem cells? I, I haven't, I'm very, uh, you know, interested in, I haven't, I haven't done any of that. Dave, Dave's all over that. I, I believe he does human. I'm not sure, but I, it's becoming the next biggest thing as far as like, you know, with, with, um, I think I heard Joe Rogan talking about it with his knee injury, really yeah. helped him his, his knee recovery. Um, and, but I'm, and as far as topically in the skin, you know, regenerating tissue, um, I'm so, it's something I'm very fascinated fascinated in but um i just uh, i don't know i mean maybe you could help me out a little bit on it well, what what are so have you worked with it well yeah, a little bit i mean there's a product i use um called j bio j bio serum and they basically go to tissue banks and they extract stem cells from fat tissue essentially and they spin it out the biggest issue with stem cells it's it's kind of a naive cell it can go in many different different directions so how do you stimulate it to go to skin versus a kidney or wherever direction so the hard part is how you guide it but there are some fda studies right now where they're doing it on burn victims where they have these stem cell guns and they spray people that have just gotten like massive burns and a week or two later like their skin's back it's insane so what? that's probably uh, the future of medicine i think is that yeah it sounds like it i had a, a friend who had a very bad uh, burn yeah just oh third degree burns all over his body and they did uh, i think they did shark shark uh, skin all over his yeah i mean i just sit there and it, yeah. it helped but man that's not a week later his skin's back. That's amazing. And I've seen that same thing in a lot of Oriental countries. They use like the skin of various fish, one because of the omega-3 fatty acids and because of right. the hydration. I've seen it. They do all these wraps and the people look like they have fish scales. It's pretty crazy.
Yeah, yeah, that's that's what he had to do, and he's back. It definitely didn't take. It took a lot more than a week. That's for sure. Totally. Now, tell me, we kind of went off the the back acne issue. What was the needle mover for that? Were there any foods that were driving that? What did you do to fix the back acne? Oh, I was just processed food. I okay. mean, diet. I would say diet and the products I was using. So I was using. Neutrogena body wash. Yeah. And I was eating pizza, hot dogs, burgers, because I was trying to put on weight. I was skinny. I was growing into my body. I was yeah. at that time 18, 19 years old, a freshman. I was competing with, you know, 22, 23 year olds who were just big into working out. And I was 168 pounds. So I got up to 191 at that time just by eating whatever I wanted because that's all I knew. Yeah. And, you know, protein, fat, calories, you know, like totally. trying to wait. And, uh, but it's, that was one of the biggest, um, catalysts in, in my, uh, back acne and my face would break out every now and then too. So it was just, uh, I cleaned that up and it took time and, but I cleaned that up with the products I was using. I went from that to, I got, I think it was Aubrey, Aubrey organics, Organics, which uh, Aubrey naturals now, but, um, anyway, yeah, that great switching that up and just becoming very aware of the ingredients. I mean, it, just getting away from those big, heavily marketed brands with toxic ingredient rosters and then going towards a more natural route. And that's just, it changed my life. It really did. I mean, I, I, I don't uh, I don't have to worry about my back knocking wood anymore. But, that's um, awesome. It, yeah, and so it really does. It makes me, you know, it, it changed my life for sure. And so that's, that's, that's definitely why I'm so passionate about it, you know, because I know how down and out I was. And now I'm just, yeah, it's, it's not there. So it feels good. I'm very excited to start using your products. I got them queued up here, so I'll be nice. great. Thanks. So walk me through your routine. I, I've heard it before, but I want to know, where is it at now? What's your daily routine like? I know you're a big guy into intermittent fasting. You're, you're doing high fats. And then also, I kind of want to know how you vary that routine when you're getting ready for like a shoot or like you're really trying to just lean out. It may not be sustainable, right? But I want to know the difference and how you how you um, compare the two or change the two. Okay. Yeah, so so as far my current morning rot- routine would be, I get up within minutes. I'm doing I'm doing something till failure, whether it's push ups, yep. pull ups, um, just to get that blood flow. Uh, I read in Men's Health a while ago that that really just helps yep. up energy throughout the day. Love that. So I'll go right into that and I'll make my morning tonic. I'll do a lot of different Chinese herbs, spirulina, um, uh, Hawaiian spirulina, shizandra, hoshu wu, gynostemma, a lot of these different. Um, Chinese herbs, and then I'll also add a little turmeric, um, a, a, you know, some um, amino acids, uh, krill oil, curcumin. I mean, I, it's a lot, but I'll, I'll do that. And so that is building off of the push-ups and really getting that blood flow. And then what I'll do, if it's not my mask day, I just mask every other day, like today was. So I'll throw on the mask, and I have this inversion table in my uh, other room right there. And so what I'll do is I'll just hang upside down, kind of collect wow. my thoughts, and I don't turn on my phone. I'm working on that. I don't turn on my phone until all this is done. And so I just kind of, you know, I set the tone for the day. I get big on gratitude, big on perspective. Um, You know, I have some music going on in the background. So for about 10 minutes, I'll be hanging upside down. Really helps lengthen out my spine, get that circulation going between the discs. A lot of blood flow. I'll have the mask on. So like you're really getting that blood flow from the derma roller. And then the mask, I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, it's just part of... You know, just getting your best self ready for the day and just feeling your best and just, you know, locked in, ready to go. So after that, um, uh, I will uh, I'll shower up, do my Bulletproof coffee after, and uh, I like to turn up the Bulletproof coffee a little bit, add a little uh, grass-fed butter, and yeah. then, um, cayenne pepper, mm-hmm. chocolate butter, maca, tribulus, cordyceps, stevia. It sounds horrible, but I, I love it. Uh, I love it. I love it. So, and then I'm just good to go. And so... Uh, so that's what I do pretty much every day. But so pre shoots, yeah. I I've been I've been noticing there's like a there's a, a little there's some vegetables that just tighten you up. I call it shrink wrapping. Yeah. So cilantro, cel- celery, uh, beets. Now why is that? It it almost acts as like a diuretic. This, yeah, it uh, does. And that's an exactly what you're doing. Oh, okay. So I just that all that water weight. And so what I'll do, uh, and I I do uh, eggs. So like pre-shoot, so the, a couple days before, so eggs, you're getting the good fats. I'll do the yolks down, the, I'll just do those raw, and I'll cook up the protein, and then avocado. So eggs, avocado, celery, cilantro, uh, I'm missing another one, is it uh, fenugreek? No, it's not fenugreek. Beets, broccoli a little bit, but just maybe, I'll cut down the sweet potato portion size a little bit, but just get all the good nutrients in there. 
and then um, yeah, definitely intermittent fast up until then. So I won't eat until 2 p.m. So say if I eat at 8 p.m. the previous night and don't eat until 2 p.m., that's 4, 12, 16, 18 hour fast, then my body is just in that state of ketosis, I believe, after the bulletproof coffee that I've had that is high in fats, but um, low in protein. Now, if I do the collagen protein, some people would say that I that takes me out of my fast, but I don't know. I mean, does it? Because I, I am adding a, a scoop of that collagen protein in there. So. Yeah, I mean, a scoop, I don't think so because you're still going to be in ketosis. The whole idea of the fast is to keep the ketosis going. And the whole idea is you don't want too much gluconeogenesis, which is basically making protein, making sugar from the protein. So I, I think you'd still be in ketosis there for sure. I've heard you say in the past, though, you really cut the fat, though, before a shoot. Are you still doing that or have you modified that? Avocado? No, I, I, I used to do that, but yeah. I just – I, I see, if anything, I, I just see a good benefit okay. uh, from the good fats, and it adds to a little vascularity. Vascularity too. So, say if I'm doing something athletic for like Oakley, and I really want, yeah, like we're gonna be, work, you know, the shoots are work. You know yeah, I mean? totally. A lot of running around, so you gotta be, you gotta have some energy. So, but uh, it's yeah, the beets with the nitric oxide content. Totally. And then I'll combine that with grass-fed butter, avocado. And then to stay mineralized, that's a big thing is, you know, here's a big misconception about salt, right? It's just that, you you know, water retention, you get bloated. I, I noticed that Himalayan salt uh, particularly does not do that. And so I'll do a little bit. I mean, I won't totally. go forward with it, but I'm talking whenever, you know, when you're getting in that fog, that Himalayan salt is something that will wake you right back up. And so uh, that those are two things that I cut down as far as the good fats and then the, the, the salt content. But... I, when you're really just trying to tighten up before a job, it's uh, that's that's what I do. Yeah, parsley is another big one. Excellent. Is that beet, parsley, celery? Is that in a drink? Are you juicing that? So yeah, it's what I do is uh, the beet I saute up. Yeah. And uh, the the parsley, avocado, um, fermented vegetable, cilantro, and celery is a mash. I just mash it up. And then I'll do uh, just with a fork, you know, a little hot sauce, a little bit, and then that, I'll do that midday, and that just satiates me. I mean, it's just something that all those nutrients are flow flowing uh, throughout the body, and just man, it's a yeah, it's definitely something I do, and just keeps me on my. And then sardines, I know I'm like known for the sardine. I just I love sardines too. Their their nutrient content is amazing. Good fats, good amount of protein, but also just it's um, it, it's super bioavailable. I would say like to the body, it just it just helps helps. Uh, I don't know, say like just get the mind right, but also it's not you're not overdoing it, and not a uh, you know it's not something that's too difficult on your digestive system, and you can absorb a lot from it. So Love that's it. another thing I'll do. Yeah. Love it. That makes sense. By the way, how'd you get the name of your business, Alatura? Alatura. So we were looking around. It's uh, it started off at, uh, with Golden Glow, and it just that's ah. like a, a bronzer to many people. Luckily, I yeah. didn't go. With it. Thankfully, I didn't. But uh, yeah, so you know, it's just from that we. I started talking with my partners as far as like uh, search engine optimization. We, we someone told me I don't think it's true, but that it's search engine optimization has is alphabet. It, you know, it's like alphabetized, but uh, you know they 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 prefer A you know before Z. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we started going into that, and I, so I knew I wanted it to be A. Um, but then uh, we started going back and forth, and it's Latin for feeding. There's I kind of wanted to be you know something in a different language. And then, yeah, we just we went. I mean, this took a while, and it was uh, it was it's extremely difficult because you only you can only have one. But I, I really feel like it, it, it uh, just embodies what our, our company's brand is about. And, uh, the logo is something I have to tell you. The logo is something I'm really I'm happy about because we went through so many different graphic designers who would just give me Google fonts. Yeah. Finally, I just grabbed a sharpie, went to Kinkos, and just started because I love my signature. I love you know. Yeah. And also the whole motto behind signing off on what's inside the product. I mean, that's my signature right there. It yeah. stood for probably like, I don't know, 20 minutes writing the same thing, Alatura. And then finally got one, I, I um, you know, copied it and sent it off to the, the graphic designer who just kind of tightened it up and smoothed it out a little bit. But yeah, that's that's how the logo came about. It's just uh, it's signing off on what's uh, what's inside, you know? And that's, that's you know, I made that too. That's awesome. I know you mentioned earlier that you're coming out with a new a new design for the bottle, a new glass bottle. When's that coming out? Oh, so so that's for the fragrance. That's fragrance, for the, got it. And we went uh, so the branding. We're going with an all like black matte to make that silver foil pop. It. Oh man, I wish I had it here. Um, 
Well, th this is like, I don't know, that's, that's yep. the neck cream right there. And so the mask, we're doing the same thing. The mask is a, it's a charcoal mat. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. subtle, but man, it, it, it looks so sleek. So that's, that's, it just, it looks great. Um, it's, uh, it's something that really just, you know, because if you could, it's something we can control, you know, the packaging is so important and it's got to reflect what's inside it. But uh, as far as the fragrance goes, it's going to be a lot different. I didn't, I, I, it's going to be like a smoke glass coming up, magnetic cap, gunmetal top, nice little uh, like etched in alatur. It's called Presence. It's a unisex organic fragrance. It is, it's mind blowing. It's, I'm actually meeting with, uh, I'm getting the sample today. So very uh, cool. I haven't cool. Held my hands. It's like a little egg. So we'll see. I'm so excited for that. Very cool. I only got two questions left. Last one. I know your evolution of being kind of the model, the baseball player, kind of the individual Hollywood actor to being the CEO and the entrepreneur. What was the biggest lesson or the most valuable lesson you learned that helped you go from the solopreneur to the entrepreneur running your business? What was that big lesson for you that helped you? Whew. If you just crystallize one thing. One thing that's been the biggest needle mover for you. Hmm. The one thing that I've maintained throughout all of the different industries that I've been in is just, I mean, unpar uh, the work ethic, the discipline. Yeah. If you combine work ethic and discipline, and um, it, that's going to take you far. I mean, that's regardless of what it is. I mean, yeah. just having that fear of failure instilled in me when I was like 14, 15 yeah. years old from a coach who gave me some really encouraging words saying you have a chance but there's somebody out there working harder than you right now he, yeah. he's fear that he, you know that I, that just has not left i there's always something that, that can be done and there and it's just it's that's that's you know you have to be excited about the work that you're putting in but just i mean do your best every single time and work work till you i felt like i fall falling asleep in parking lots of the post office before with my car running and snapping back up and i mean that's it's just it's it feels good, you know, to, to know that you put absolutely um, into everything and then you don't have any regrets. It's just like, man, life's, life's pretty good. I mean, you can't, you know, you can, can, things that you can control, such as what you put into it, how you treat others and gratitude and perspective, things like that. They all work together and just you know, live a, I mean, pretty happy life. And then, yeah, you know, I can see where the work ethic of sports probably transitioned over and really helped you with that. Absolutely. You know, competition, dealing with failure. Yeah. Dealing with rejection it's gonna happen but man just keep going you know baseball that's yeah that's another one that's that's, that's how uh you know dealing with failure just being resilient you know it's just, i know i gave you probably seven i was only supposed to give you one but. nah you did great you did great man uh, yeah. last question for me if you're on a desert island and you only could bring one supplement now this may be hard for you with your concoction drinks in the morning <laughs> if you could bring only one thing what would it be spirit hawaiian spirulina Got it. I mean, we're talking vitamin A, beta carotene, B12, B6. I mean, you're going to have, hopefully have a toothbrush, but yeah, you mix that <laughs> with hopefully some, some good clean water and, on that island. And I, I mean, I, oh, and it has the highest protein content uh, per, uh, per body. I mean, per capita, however, it's uh, yeah, very high protein content, believe it or not. Do you know Excellent. that? It's I did crazy. not know. I did not know that, but that's amazing. That's great. Yeah. Learn something yeah. every day. Excellent. So if people are really jazzed up, they want to learn more about how to improve their skin health and learn more about you and, and sure. get your products, where's the best way to do that? Sure. So our, our website is alituranaturals.com. And that's so that's A L I T U R A N A T U R A L S dot com. And I'm at Andy Nilo. That's A N D Y H N I L O on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, I love any questions that you may have. Please reach out info at alaturanaturals.com. And I definitely want to give your audience a 15% discount. What's uh, so what's do you just want to call it uh, Wellness 15? Yeah, just, we can call it Wellness 15. I'll put the link below as well as the promo code below, and people can, can use that. That's perfect. Sounds good. And if you have any questions, anything like that, please reach out. This is my baby. I love what I do, and it's it's I, I encourage you to ask questions. Hey, Andy, I appreciate it. You know, I'm an entrepreneur myself helping patients, and I just so appreciate the energy that you embody trying to create this great product to help people kind of get their health to the next level. So that's great. Well, yeah, no, I'd throw it right back to you. You're doing the same thing. You're making people's lives better. And that's It just feels good. You know, life's, life's fun, right? Well, Andy, thanks for a great interview. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Take care. Too. 
Got a question for Dr. J? Go to beyondwellnessradio.com and click the questions button. Then tune in to hear the answer. Also, if you like the show, click below to review us on iTunes. For more Beyond Wellness Radio, go to beyondwellnessradio.com.